всю свою жизнь мы пробегаем в поисках счастья, а иногда, чтобы приблизиться к нему... Radio Life presents the Health Wave. Maximum information for making wise health and lifestyle decisions. Наполни жизнь. Good evening, Atlanta. Good evening, America. Hello, Canada, Israel, Europe, Russia, everyone who is listening to us. This is Radio Life. This is the Health Wave. My name is Victoria Boraev, and I would like to ask everyone right now to tune in into our wave and meet my very special guest <laughs> in the studio. Her name is Wendy Steinbaum. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Victoria. Thank you so much for all the reasonable and unreasonable efforts to be here tonight. <laughs> I thank you for choosing me to do this show. Thank you. Together with Wendy, we're going to talk about all the secrets of long and healthy life. And before we start doing that, I'd like to tell you a little secret about Wendy. <laughs> And the secret is this. Wendy just celebrated her 80th birthday, believe it or not. And I want to congratulate you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> so, and this radio show is a special way of celebrating your birthday. Mm, thank you. <laughs> uh, before we start, my interrogation of Wendy's secrets about her long and healthy life, I'd like to announce that um, according to our tradition at the uh, Health Wave, we're going to um, play a contest. We're going to raffle off a special prize. And the special prize we have for tonight is uh, giving us compliments of impact teas a set of four organic teas and we have french raspberry tea we have decaffeinated green tea raspberry white tea and detox tea so this four uh, different kinds of organic teas will go to the winner at the end of the show and to win the contest all you need to do is to make a comment during the uh, live stream. So you have to stay with us till the end of the show. <laughs> you have to say hi to us or something nice about us, <laughs> something positive. So at the end of the show, we can pick the winner. Um, the only condition you have to do it once to be counted as um, a candidate. Uh, Impact Tees, just to let you know, is a company located out of Johns Creek, um, uh, Georgia, and um, they sell organic teas. You can <coughs> find their page on Facebook under Impact Tees. Um, they can arrange and serve a tea party for, or for any occasion. They can ac actually uh, vendor at festivals and events. So find Impact Tees and um, purchase their teas, order them, and enjoy. And um, thank you, Impact Teas, for donating this wonderful gift set to our future winner. So, Wendy. Yes, Victoria. I have uh, three questions to you to begin with. Do you know what, uh, what life expectancy is in the United States as of today? Well, um, I think it has gone up. When I first started macrobiotics, Michio Kushi said it was 120 years. Whoa. But I don't know. <laughs> I think it's maybe a, there are more centurions now than ever. Yes, but I think w what it is is we all are, we all want the age to be uh, 120 years. We all want to live up to 120 <laughs> years, but I doubt that nowadays anyone could do that. No, I don't know. Even though it's possible. I'm not sure I would even want Theoretically. to. Theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? The uh, life expectancy today is um, estimated as 78 years old. 
Oh, wow. So you, you outlived it. Ah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, and I have to tell you, uh, if you look at the United States, it has probably the largest number of centenarians or people who live a long life than anywhere else in the world. Really? Yes, and that number estimates as 72,000 wow. as of right now, and <laughs> which is great. But number two country that has centenarians is Japan. That's what I course. thought was the first. Japan, <laughs> right. Well, no, but the, you, there is a but. Japan has 30,000 people who are centenarians, right? 30,000. But listen to this. That number quadrupled in the last 10 years. Wow. Meaning that Japan actually, that number grows dramatically in Japan comparing to any other country. Isn't it something? It is very impressive. Very impressive, yes. Now, do you know how old is the oldest person in the world? I think that somebody in Japan who just died at 116. Um, well, according to my information, it's a man who lives in Japan. Yeah. His name is Masazu Nonaka, and I don't know if he's still alive, but he is to be almost 113 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, of course he lives in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but besides all the jokes, we all want to live a long life. Yes. We all want to be healthy. We all want to be beautiful. We all want to live to 120 years old. In, like good, in a good capacity. In a good capacity, yeah, exactly. I don't want to be sick. And you don't want to be sick. No. I don't want to be no. sick. But besides that, I don't want to age. Just like any woman who's looking at this show right now, we don't want to look old. Would you agree? Yeah, I think I'm glad you clarify that because, yes, being 80 is wonderful. Uh, I love it. I mean, I'm free. I, I have all the things I've ever wanted to in my life. So um, being 80 has its perks. But to be 80 and healthy is the goal. And to be a 90 and healthy and to live on my own and self-sufficient, that's my dream. Absolutely. So extending life expectancy yeah. or living longer doesn't mean that you have to be incapacitated or you know lose your independence. No. Exactly. But what my point is, once we turn 40, probably around that age, we start looking in the mirror. Oh my God, I have all these wrinkles. My goodness, all these visible signs of aging. Look at this, puffy eyes. <laughs> oh my God, where am I going? I'm aging, look at my neck. Oh no, <laughs> right? So we right. look for every single visible thing on our face. Yes. To make ourselves, to tell ourselves that we're aging, right? We don't want that. And we're ready to do anything. We look for wrinkle creams, we do tummy tucks, we do uh, facelifts, we do whatever we can to disguise these visible signs. And what's so interesting, we're ready to do that, but we don't want to give up all those causes, the real causes of our aging. You know? Well, I have to interject right now because uh, I feel that aging is a privilege. Absolutely. Uh, denied to many. Absolutely. And I hope to be doing it gracefully from now on. And yes, I see every new wrinkle, deeper ones, and, uh, and then I have to remember that. And I think about this one movie star, Katherine Hepburn, and she had railroad tires in her face, railroad tracks, mm -hmm. and she was still beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what can I tell you? I can't make them go away. Absolutely. I have to love them for where they are. And, and I earned know. every single one of them. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the way you said it. You earned every single way of them. It's a privilege. It is a privilege. It is a privilege. Well, the useful fountain has not been found yet, but we are in control of how we age. Yes, I think so. Absolutely. There's no <coughs> doubts about it. So at your age, how do you feel? Tell us more about it. I feel wonderful. I feel better than I've felt in a long time. Um, and. I look forward to a physical um, ability to keep myself younger and capable, and that's my goal. And sounds like you feel great about yourself too. I do feel great about myself. I mean, um, yes, 
I do feel great about myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Not too many people can say that. Well, I even think I've come age. a long way. I mean, I've climbed a mountain. Um, and uh, I started this journey for health in 1984. And I've been <clears throat> trying to find the perfect and easiest and uh, most efficient way to eat. And I think food played a tremendous part mm -hmm. in my uh, capacity at 80. And that's how, and that's why you feel so great about yourself. And looks like you are not opposed to announce your age to people because you allowed no. me to say that out I'm loud. I'm proud. I'm proud of it. Wow, that's great. <laughs> that's great. So I bet it takes a happy person to feel this way at this age. Are you a happy person? I'm a very happy person. Every single day you wake up and you say, oh, I'm so happy. No, or every ever... day I wake up and I say thank you for another beautiful day in my life. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I like that. And I, I bet it takes a good amount of optimism to live to the age of 80 and to feel this way and to feel this way about yourself. Yes, and I think that for myself, I wish I knew... Um, and my, my older son is teaching me how not to overthink and not to worry. And I spent my life from the time I was eight, nine, ten years old being a worry wart. That was my nickname. And so that I doesn't wish, go along with optimism, obviously. Uh, no, but I think that now I'm happier because I'm not worried as much, and mm -hmm. um, I just don't have that anxiety. And I still catch myself many times overthinking. And it's not necessary. When did you understand that? <laughs> After my son Gerald got a hold of me and told me I th was overthinking too many things. And the pattern just kept going on and on. I said, well, I really am overthinking this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thank you, Gerald. <laughs> By the way, I hope your family is watching and uh, you're able to communicate to them tonight. I don't know if they are. They know about it. We'll see. <laughs> um, the way you feel about yourself today, is it any different than the way you felt about yourself, let's say, 40 years ago? Oh, yeah. I, hated, way back. I hated myself. Oh, 40. Really? I was overweight. <clears throat> I was unhappy. Um... Well, actually, 40 years, yeah. Um, and then I, um, I prayed for a way to eat so that I didn't have to weigh and measure my food ever, ever again. I was on Weight Watchers too many times. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a compulsive overeater. I love food. Uh, I collect recipes. I would I don't never make... say that. Huh? I would never say that looking at you. <laughs> well, that's why I'm saying it, because I collect recipes, um, but I don't make 99% of them, but the ones I do give me a lot of joy. And um, I prayed for a way to eat that I could indulge myself, because the one thing that I absolutely do not ever do is I hate the feeling of deprivation. Mm -hmm. Many people do. Hate it, and I don't want to do it. And so um, when I found macrobiotics, I found a way that I could eat. So let's, let's take a, a moment and explain to our audience what is macrobiotics. I'm going to let you do that. Well, macrobiotics, uh, we're going to come back to it, but it's a way of uh, living and eating aligning with the nature and actually choosing more plant-based foods and uh, going according to your body, listening to your body, listening to your symptoms and living according to the season, according to the <coughs> health, health condition you have. So basically it's um, tuning into your body and listening to it and making intelligent decisions based on that and choosing food in choosing your lifestyle it's it's a very fine um, philosophy and way of living uh, very complex that cannot be explained in, in two words no but I have to um, make a, a statement here mm -hmm. that I started my path on macrobiotics um, but I've since food has evolved in this country to be called now as plant-based 
whole foods. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that covers the whole thing much simpler than determining, uh, making the determination, it is macrobiotic, it's, it's not point. macrobiotic. Are it's you macrobiotic? Are you not macrobiotic? I couldn't deal with that anymore. Right. People get scared of terminology. People like simplicity. Yes. And, so know, I so. think that I'm very excited that they, I've lived long enough to see that the whole food plant-based movement is affecting so many people. I watch on Facebook all day, every day, all over the world. People are doing it, and the the that's exciting. It's so exciting to me, um, and um, families are doing it, and the changes that they're making in their families and their families' health is just so exciting to me. Well, that's the only successful way of doing it is doing it as a family, you know. But if, that's hard. It's it's easier to do it as a family. It's easier. It's but easier. It's, 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 it's a panacea. Uh, yes, but at the same time, it uh, ensures more success, you know, I rather than I, one person is trying to do something and the rest of the family doesn't support. Well, I came from that. So obviously, 40 years ago, you didn't know about macrobiotics, you didn't know any of it. What was important to you back then in your life? Feeling better, being happier, mm -hmm. feeling better, and not having food as my enemy. I wanted to love food, I wanted to embrace food, and I wanted to eat it. <laughs> and I wanted to get the pleasures from it. And um, my children, my family did not embrace it but they were wonderful they embraced me mm -hmm. and they uh, my husband would say I would stand in front of a Mack truck to to for me to get what I need and, and we've walked out of many restaurants and my children will tell you very nicely or not nicely that I would bring my own food I used to bring Raymond's uh, to stores to restaurants and say just put two cups of water in and boil it and then bring it to me in a bowl I'll be fine and so they laugh at Strange that today. Strange woman. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh at that today that I did that 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but now it's so wonderful because it's universal. Wherever you go, people are doing it. And so the restaurants are so much more accommodating and they want to accommodate you. That's and true. the chefs want the challenge. Because so many people have restrictions now, dietary restrictions. Restaurants have to do that. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, looking at you, actually, someone may say, well, you know, uh, looking this way, you probably have all the time to yourself. You live for yourself. You take care of yourself. Why not look this way? Mm -hmm. But I know you, I know you were a very dedicated wife and, and a mother. Um, and with your husband together, you raised a wonderful family. So can, you. I, can you tell us a little bit more about your family? What part, what do you want to know? Uh, <coughs> who, how many children do you have? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have three wonderful children. <coughs> um, they range in the high 50s to the low 50s. <coughs> I don't think they want me to tell everybody their age. <laughs> um, we don't have to. But they, you can figure it out if I'm 80, so. <laughs> um, and they're wonderful, and they do uh, respect and support my food. My children, when I go into a restaurant uh, and I get tongue-tied, my daughter-in-law, my sons, uh, everybody says, uh, my mother doesn't eat this, 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 sugar, butter, you know, gluten, she's gluten-free, and uh, no dairy, and um, no animal, except I am a pescatarian, I do have fish socially. Uh, so you all go into the restaurant and they say, hey, uh, <laughs> waiter, we brought our mother and she's health conscious. <laughs> Yes. Well, they really do take care of me. They they really protect me and take care of me and support that. So you weren't always health conscious, just like you said. Um, what made you change? What made you make this transition? People become health conscious for very different reasons. What was your reason to make this shift? My sister-in-law, who I loved, <clears throat> was one of my biggest first losses in my life died in 1977 
and I went into a terrible depression. I think I had um, hypoglycemia, um, and I wasn't. It was not a happy time for me, and I just uh, I had to do something. So I was very fortunate. I went down to um, Nathan Pritigan down in Florida, and they talked to me about food and exercise. And uh, I became passionate about it, uh, the exercise. I walked a full marathon on my 60th birthday. Wow. And I walked a few half marathons. And you couldn't yeah. do it at the age of 40? Oh, no. 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 And Great um, changes. so they taught me how to eat, how to walk, how to exercise. And that was wonderful. And that started me mm -hmm. on the journey. And in 1984, I went to a cooking class, January 18th, 1984, and I'm sitting around a table like this, and <clears throat> they were telling stories about their food and their health and their recoveries, and um, they mentioned macrobiotic, and I came home and I said to my husband, I said, if I give up this, this, and this, a macrobiotic, as of this night, I don't want to ever eat that again. And so that's how I know my birthday is not January 18th, 1984. And I've never regretted it. When you started, um, did you start changing your lifestyle together with your family or did you just have to dive into this all by yourself? Well, first of all, I was like a short order cook in my house. This one didn't want that. What do you want? I'll make, you know, so I made three meals um, for pretty much, uh, a lot of time in the in the, in our family, so I um, and then my sons were out, off to college, and so the only one that really got the brunt of it, my change was my husband and my daughter, and that was that. So I think we have a question in the studio, and I'm going to read it. <clears throat> uh, Natalia Anashkina is asking, I think she's saying, very beautiful and happy guest speaker <laughs> you have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It's a compliment to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. What are the secrets of her happily and happy and healthy life? What's her everyday menu? What's her favorite food? Natalia, you are taking away all the questions on my list because I am prepared to interrogate this lady for the entire hour. I promise we'll get to these questions and they all will be answered tonight. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Best, for, best I can, yes. We'll do the best we can. So let's, let's just um, start from the beginning. So you made the change and um, your family somewhat supported you. Yes. They didn't eat this way, but they supported me. They supported you. Yeah. Which is important. I just wanted to make a, a comment on this, that it's very important that the family supports you. Families, if you're listening, if you're watching us, if you have a family member who needs help, truly give him all the support you can. Don't leave him alone in this, because this is a difficult journey of transitioning yourself from one lifestyle to another lifestyle. They do need your support. Even if you don't want to eat this way with them, even if you don't want to change your habits, they need your support, mental, emotional, physical, whatever you can provide. Yes. Which, which is very important. Um, now you were able to make this transition. You were able to make this change. Many people don't succeed in that. Do you believe it takes a strong person to be able to succeed? Are you a strong person? Victoria, I think I'm a strong person, but I'll tell you what I think the biggest ingredient is, is fear. For me, it was fear of dying and being sick mm -hmm. and dependent. Uh, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I did not want what happened to my sister-in-law to happen to me. And <clears throat> my sister-in-law and I used to sit at a kitchen table and we'd have a glass of milk and, and a twin box of Malamars. Mm -hmm. So I ate just the way she did. And then I, I learned the connection between food and disease. And so I didn't want any part of it. I have to tell you, I'm a coward. Mm -hmm. I am truly a coward. And I don't want like pain in any way, shape or form. 
And so You're to me... You're just a normal human being. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is the easiest, softer way. I see you keep coming back uh, with all my questions. There is a pattern. You keep coming back to food, food, food. So let's talk more about food. What role does it play? Like, I understand it plays the major role in your lifestyle. Yes. Let's talk more about your food. <coughs> what is your food? Grains, beans, vegetables of all colors, all shapes, all sizes, and um, minimal fruit. Probably I'm eating more fruit now these days than I have ever did in all the years of microbiotics. Um, but I cook my fruit. I love my cook food cooked. Um, so, <clears throat> teas, I mean, I, I don't know, is it, what did I miss? All the plant-based, all the whole the plants, foods, yeah. let's say, yeah. this way. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, was it easy for you to learn how to cook these things and, you know, transition to plant? A lot of people mm -hmm. find it's, it's challenging, you know, to, to really learn all these natural foods. What did you do? How did you succeed in, in doing I, this? I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm sorry, there is no uh, no magic secret to this. You no, know. you have I, to get I back into the kitchen. I spent a lot of hours in the kitchen, and now I so will did say, I. <laughs> and now I'll say um, that I'm trying to do less in the kitchen. <clears throat> I live alone. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I lost my husband, and. Um, I'm trying to minimize the amount. Can I say what I've been doing now? Absolutely, please share I've been, with us. I've had a passion we want um, your the secrets. last couple of months that I've been watching the Forks Over Knives official. That's a great site. Web, uh, it's, a, it's a Facebook site. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm enthralled by these people. And <clears throat> they have taught me simplicity. Where I don't have to be in the kitchen all day long, and um, so I, I'm very enthusiastic about these people, uh, and the changes they're making, and the simple way that they're doing it, and um, so that's what I'm working on now. So they they give you great ideas about they the, do the different recipes and do I mean I, I'm just very I'm, educational. I'm just loving it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm trying to be a very good interlocutor here and find out, me and Natalia, we want to know your secrets. So let's um, I don't know if there are any secrets. I'm trying to give them everything to you. <laughs> okay, you will, you will. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going to keep asking you questions. And you guys, please keep commenting because we want you to win this wonderful tea set. So I hope we're getting comments and, and uh, hellos here in the studio yeah please keep doing that and I'd like to ask you so tell us more about your your schedule your typical day what is it like well I'm learning how to sleep a little later <laughs> you're learning how to sleep I'm a learning later. how to sleep a little later Interesting. and I'm not making classes until 10 o'clock classes what kind of classes I take uh, four Pilates classes a week one um, Tai Chi for seniors uh, and one therapeutic yoga class <clears throat> and um, there were some others I throw in there occasionally but those are my, ba my base. So basically you are in a class every single day? I keep Fridays open. Well, Natalia, you, you, you're listening. I hope you're listening carefully. <laughs> to stay young, you have to attend some sort of physical activity class almost every single day. Well, <laughs> let me explain my reason for that. That gives me the structure I need not to stay in bed all day. Being alone, my biggest problem is isolation. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm alone too much, it doesn't work for me. So I go to classes because someone's expecting me. Someone is happy to see me. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing something good for myself. So it's also a social thing for you. And, uh, and I'm getting stronger <clears throat> every day. Okay, so that's one part of your day. So what else do you do during your day? 
cook. Do you stay <laughs> active or do you really not so active anymore? Uh, I think I'm always active, but um, I am learning how to relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm reading a little bit more books and, uh, you know, I got hooked on a couple of TV programs. I, uh, and the politics is driving me insane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I just have to steer myself away and sometimes I go right to it. So I don't know, it just depends. You know what? There's no have to's for me anymore. There's no shoulds anymore for me. Oh, great. And I find that I'm living my life, how do I say this nicely? I can't. More to By enjoy. the seat of my pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if I think it and I want to do it, I do it. Well, I was going to ask you, do you have any rules or have you had rules for yourself? All my life I had rules, but I right. don't have any now. No rules at all. No boundaries for for keeping a healthy lifestyle, or is it just your life already that it's you my don't life. have it's to just, it's just, it's make too an much. effort? It's become part of me, and mm -hmm. it's not something I have to think about. What kind of rules <coughs> did you have for yourself before? You had to exercise four miles a day. You had to, <clears throat> you know, you had to do this, and you had to do that, and you had to do the laundry. Well, keep telling <laughs> us what this and that. What was it? Well, we, we, listen, we've all run homes. We know what it takes to run a house. True. Um, so just staying active in the house. You, yeah, I mean, I, I did it all, so now I don't have to. You know, um, I don't even put the bedspread on the bed anymore. Isn't wow. that wonderful? So all you do that is just enjoying me. your life. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's I actually, make the bed, but I don't put the bedspread on anymore. So that actually um, allows you to relax a little bit more. I've learned to One relax. One of the ways to relax. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Do you have any hobbies? <laughs> food. <laughs> food. Well, that's a great... To eat or to Recipes. Cook? Recipes. I am. My recipes are just... Takes up almost the whole room. <laughs> so yeah. you collect recipes? I do. And do you ever look at them? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um, what are your priorities today? My priorities are to live another day. <clears throat> to be safe, to be healthy, and uh, to be able to function and love and enjoy my family, my friends, and myself. What's so interesting, I'm listening to you and I'm making a parallel um, about people who live in the blue zones. What's You've that? heard about blue zones, no? So, no, I'm not sure. Those are centenarians yeah. um, around the world who live in, in different parts of the world, primarily in Okinawa, Japan. Oh, that's right. Yes, uh, Ikari, Greece, Sardinia, Italy, yeah. and then <clears throat> Costa Rica, okay. and, and then Loma Linda, California. So those people. And, um, you know, I've read about them a lot. And if you want to know how to live long, you have to study those populations who live a long and healthy life, right? So you okay. want to know what they do, you want to know what they eat, you want to know what they think about <coughs> and what their day looks like. So looking at them, I'm trying to make a comparison about what you're telling me and what I read. And it, it's interesting. It's, it's very interesting. I don't think I could look in and Okinawa, when I can live Okinawa, in Japan. Okinawa, of course. <laughs> I don't think I could. Simply because I'm, you don't live in Japan. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm very grateful for the life I've been afforded to have. Very good. Um, which makes me very happy. Which makes you happy. Very happy. I had an interesting question slipped out of my mind, but let's, let's <laughs> look at Natalia's questions. So the secrets of your... So you said you don't have any secrets to so your happy and healthy life. I, I don't think I have any secrets. I, I, I'm very happy to share uh, anything I do. I don't hold anything back. Oh, I'm not going to tell her that. Well, you, know. you look like a very flexible person physically. Um, not so many people can actually brag about it at the age of 80 or even at the age of 60. So what do you think needs to be done in order to achieve this flexibility? Well, it's very interesting because <clears throat> I'm not a flexible person. I was like a board. <laughs> and um, mentally, physically <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, but now I am more flexible and I have gotten to be in classes where I yell, oh my God, I couldn't have done, I couldn't do this before. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
And that, that's been happening a lot lately. Mm -hmm. So I think that the dedication to my Pilates and my activities mm -hmm. has definitely been rewarding me with the flexibility. Well, see, you have to develop a habit, actually, to to go and, and work out every day in the group. You of, have to. Among uh, the group of people. You know, I have eliminated shoulds in my life. Mm -hmm. You should work out, you should do this, and you should do that. It has to be, I want to, choose to, like it, love it. I love that. And if I want to do it, it's no big deal. So, Natalia, let's go home and make a sign for yourself, for, for ourselves, and put it on the refrigerator, TV, everywhere. Cover up your TV to say, I want to, I choose to. And I tomorrow like morning, it, let's and go, I love it. Let's go to a class, <laughs> right tomorrow morning. <laughs> and you like it, and you, you learned how to love it. Yeah, you do. You do. Uh, I think that you learn how to love the success, mm -hmm. and the success is empowering. It's empowering, and um, I love it when my Pilates teacher says, you know, not everybody can do that, Wendy. That's true. <laughs> so what were your rules about food? Obviously, you were trying to keep a plant-based direction, yes. right? So that's one rule. Uh, there, were there any other rules that you did not allow yourself to do or something that you were going by, by certain books or rules? No, I think the whole thing was very clear to the no meat, the no animal. And I did not come to a no animal through the animal rights. Mm -hmm. I, I now appreciate it mm -hmm. more than I did in the 80s. I came to it <clears throat> for the health reasons. For my own preservation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just was happy not to have meat anymore. And I keep the fish for social reasons. I, it's very difficult. It's more challenging to be vegan for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can be vegan all week long, but if I go out with my family, I want to share the fish with them. So is there any food that you could say this is one of your special foods that you attribute your, your health to because you've been eating it, because when you eat it, it makes you feel good? What are your favorites? I'm sorry, there's no secrets. <clears throat> See, guys, I'm trying to get <laughs> secrets out of this lady I, I, for the last no 35 minutes. It's very simple. And the thing that I like it so much about it is everybody can do it if they want to. It's Absolutely. not difficult. It's not, it's changing. It's changing a habit. Um, but <clears throat> anybody, ha it's there for the taking. You're only proving my point. Even small changes of your habits that you make actually bring very good results. It's it's all rewarding in a big way. I happen to agree with that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets so overwhelming mm -hmm. that nobody, they don't know where to start. But don't start from everything. Exactly. Just make that little change. Mm -hmm. And eat a big cake by a small bite. Every improvement. Well, I couldn't one eat a bite small a bite time. of a cake if I tried. <laughs> so that analogy <laughs> doesn't work for me. <laughs> but but actually, one good habit leads another yes. to another good habit. But and it's it the success mm -hmm. that I've learned that makes that next step easier. Right, and that's why we say take three weeks out of your life and try it. Be diligent and try something new. Develop a new habit, and then in three weeks you want to do. Again, three more weeks. Right. And then slowly but surely, before you know it, you're going to be already, um, you know, doing really, really well. Because I hated this. the feeling of being overwhelmed. And I was there in the beginning. It mm -hmm. was terribly overwhelming. Well, let's <laughs> talk about the social aspect of this. Um, I know you have friends. I know you socialize a lot. How do you, how do you find this, this balance between your lifestyle and uh, you know what your friends expect of you. It's not easy. Uh, the good news is they don't expect me to eat anything other than what <clears throat> I'll bring <clears throat> to an occasion. They don't. I beg them, don't try and feed me. Mm -hmm. It's just too difficult, and it's too exhausting. So I really prefer that they don't try and feed me. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I just bring food and hope that they like it. And I hope it makes an impression on them. And, uh, and I eat before I go anywhere. Oh, that's a good, that's a good uh, advice. Eat before you go anywhere. Yeah. It's not fun to be hungry. What about your family? I know you spend a lot of time with your grandchildren. Yeah. So, um, what do you do with your grandkids? The same thing I do with everybody else. You go out? <laughs> yeah. You take them to a restaurant? Many. Uh -huh. And they all know they have a health-conscious grandmother. Well, that I think they would call me more crazy than health conscious. <laughs> <laughs> I think they put up with me. I don't think that, you know, I think my children, my, they hold me out like a puppet. You know, <laughs> let her just do her thing and she'll be fine. That's funny. Um, okay, so I have a question to you. What do you think, in your opinion, a woman, sh three things that she should do and three things she should not do to be a happy and healthy person at such an age, like to live to be 80? I don't know, Victoria. Or just to That's be healthy. Tall. That's a tough question. That's a tough question. I think that, <clears throat> I think a woman has to now be true to themselves mm -hmm. and not, um, I think that they need to do what makes them happy. I think they have every right to be happy and they have every right to have time to take care of themselves and when I was raising my children, there was no such thing as um, <clears throat> private time, my time. Who would ever think that I would say to my children, okay, this is my time. My time came on Sunday or Saturday when the TV went on and the, and the sports started. My job was to fill the coffee table up as, from beginning to end and then I was done. The babysitter came the mm -hmm. football, the sports, then I was done. But there was no such thing as your own time. So I think, but now today women need their own time and they have to find a way to, to have it. Do you think it's more important to be a giver or a receiver? Oh God, you're hitting low. <laughs> <clears throat> not easy and I'm not good at, I'm learning in my older years to be a receiver, but I was always much happier giving it, being a giver. Who are you now? I'm in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I know you still like to spend time with your ch with your grandchildren. I'm yeah. always impressed how you give yourself to your grand, give your time uh, to. That's changed, and it's hard for me mm -hmm. because they're too busy for me. So it's hard for me now. I don't get to spend as much time with all my grandchildren. I have a, another question to you. Are you afraid of dying? Okay, boy, you're hitting low. Let's see. <clears throat> I am not afraid of dying as much as I am afraid of not being here. <laughs> of not being here. Yeah, I don't want to leave. I want to be here. I want to see my children get older. I want to see my grandchildren get older. <clears throat> I, I want to be around. Um, again, my son, Gerald, um, it gave, told me to read a book about death and it has calmed me down a lot <clears throat> um, and so I don't think I have a fear what is I have a book? fear of being sick or in pain but I always said to my kids I said you better be sure I'm dead before you put me in the ground <laughs> so you know I just want to be sure it's all right what is that book that you read about dying Oh gosh. Do you remember? Um, yeah, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about something. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, let's see. That would be interesting oh. to know. Yeah, it's, um, it's not a, a Jewish book. Oh gosh. Uh, Imagine Heaven, Near Death Experiences. And who's the author? Oh gosh. Go ahead, talk about something. You know else. that many people attribute their longevity to their um, genes. What do you think about genetics? I think that, um, <clears throat> I think I bless my mother on a daily basis uh, for my appearance, for my face, my genes. 
uh, and my parents, because I do think that has something to do with it. It doesn't have everything to do with it, but it's a good beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, Dan Butner, who studied the Blue Zones, the secrets of Blue Zones, he writes about it. He says that 25% of uh, success can be attributed to genes, you know, in longevity. The rest, 75%, it's your lifestyle. It's your lifestyle choices. 75% is your lifestyle cho choices and only 25% genes. I, I, I would tend to agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard not to. It's hard uh, not to agree with this statement. Yeah. But let's do a little test right now. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about principles of people who live in the blue zones. Okay. How they live and, you know, what they do, <clears throat> which is very, very interesting. First of all, I have to say that uh, people who live in the blue zones, they are... Uh, they care about what they eat and it's mostly plant-based foods you can compare to yourself um, they they use clean water they care about how much time this they spend outdoors and how much sunlight they get for the vitamin d you know they care about um, their social habits and you know about all these things they they care about how much physical activity they do and uh, for example, what's so interesting in Costa Rica, Nicoya Peninsula, right? What the way they greet each other, uh, they say "pura vida," meaning pure life or full of life, right? So they you know, we walk by and say "pura vida." So <laughs> it's so interesting. Uh, people, um, this is their mantra, I would say. So their principles are number one principle: move naturally, just like what you said. When you move around the house, you do chores and you don't have to do any anything special. You don't have to go to the gym, honestly. All you have to do is just, you know, do your everyday activities, just be active. Right. Don't sit by the TV or, you know, and let your laundry pile up. Right. Just be active at home. Right. So that, that's already enough. That's what they do. They just move naturally. The next principle is know your purpose. They always know what they live for. They always know that they live for providing for their families, and that's important. Family values are extremely important for those type of centenarians. So knowing your purpose keeps you going, keeps you moving forward. Yeah. Uh, the next one, kick back. So you have to shed that stress off however you want. You have to take a nap, take a nap. You have to pray, pray, or you have to socialize with friends just to, to you know, to get out of that stress mode. It's great. Do whatever not to be stressful. So that's important. Then I like this one, the three for, for the food. Eat less. Mm, move more. <laughs> move more, definitely. This was their number one uh, yeah. thing to do. But eat less. Eat until you're full to, to 80%. Only. I could never do that. So that's one thing that's hard to do for many people. I cannot people. do that. Yeah, but that's important. I understand it, but I don't have the capacity to do that. Actually, when you do that, when you do that, uh, you're able to move more. Yeah. If you stuff yourself up, you can't even move much. Right. You know? So the activity level definitely goes down. So then eat less meat. So their foods are primarily based on plant-based choices beans grains whole grains fruits and vegetables i would say vegetables and fruits yes yeah so uh, clean water like i said fresh air you know and uh, drink in moderation they don't drink much so there is no need if you know of other ways to unwind yourself why would you want to drink a lot you're talking about alcohol alcohol oh okay. i'm talking about alcohol right. no water <clears throat> is important we yeah. have to drink a lot of water but alcohol, um, there you have to be careful. There right. is no safe amount of alcohol that, you know, uh, is allowed, actually. That's true. And then another thing, have faith. So all centenarians in Blue Zones, they attend some sort of faith-based services on a weekly basis. Important to have faith in something, in somebody, you know. Right. Um, power of love, you know, uh, that one is huge huge it's it's huge right. so uh, to have a partner or to be attached to your extended family living in the community that's important right and also be social right 
you, you have to have friends, you have to develop hobbies, you have to be active with your friends. Um, how many of those are the same for you? Oh, gee, I was supposed to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't concentrating. So one thing I think you mentioned that it's hard to eat less. I, yeah, I find that it's very hard. Uh, I would rather put less food on my plate mm -hmm. and finish it then I don't ever, I, I'm captain of the clean the plate club. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't like, but I'll take less. So I think uh, for that purpose, you can probably take a plate that is smaller in the size yeah. to begin with. <clears throat> right. Right. And I actually had an idea um, to order plates for myself that say, take 20 minutes before going for seconds. Well, that helps. That helps too. It helps, but I don't do that well. Well, actually, <laughs> it, it helps a lot. Yeah. If you if you eat and you still feel like you want more, it's a good thing to wait 20 minutes because in 20 minutes your brain registers how much you ate and you really feel full. If you don't, if you go for your seconds and you eat a second portion, then 20 minutes later it's not going to feel fun at no. all. This is how people overeat. Right. How about your chewing habits? Not up to snuff. Wow. I don't. It's uh, one of the hardest things to do, actually. It is. Um, macrobiotics. I was a big proponent in chewing 100 times, 50 times. And it was interesting because my father always wanted us to chew it 25 times. And even as young children. Uh, but I just never liked I never couldn't do it. Well, you know what, for children it's hard to chew because they're always on the go, they're always yeah. active, they don't have time to sit down and meditate, you know, in their <laughs> chewing mode, definitely. But actually 25 times is not much. No, it's not. Not at all. Um, in macrobiotics we say you have to start at 30 minimum. Yeah, you know, right. Just, just to train yourself, just to get Listen, into the chewing I never chewing said mode. I was perfect. Nobody is. I, nobody ever said I was perfect. I do the best I can. And um, and I try. But for you to live to this age and be physically active and you know emotionally happy and and clear-minded, something has to be done right. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, I think it's great that you chose me for this um, radio program, and um, I'm happy to do it. But I have no magic. Well, let's summarize. So there is no magic in um, living to the age of eighty in good health, all you have to do is follow a plant-based diet. I think that's very important. Exercise every day. At least five or six days or five, five days a week. Five days a week. Yeah. Okay. And I think you need, you know, I, I tell you, was I have learned to uh, absolutely zone out. Mm -hmm. Sunday sometimes I don't even get out of my pajamas mm -hmm. and it's kind of nice get up Monday morning and oh, I am hard. ready to go. Mm -hmm. I would never have given myself that gift. And That's I think true. that is a gift. It is a gift. Yeah, so just really uh, to summarize, this was like an experiment to me, just to bring you here and to, just to hear, maybe you'll say something that we don't know yet. I about. haven't done that yet. Right, <laughs> so it's, it's all very simple. Truly, eating good food, exercising, being active, and then living to your passions, raising your children, being active and, and uh, attentive to your families. It's all part of nourishment, and it's all part of making you healthier, and actually um, becoming who you are, and, and living to this age, and you know, feeling that you fulfill your life. When I look at my adult children and my adult grandchildren and Melanie, uh, she's going to be 11, I, I feel very proud of my family and what they've done with their children and watching the, it's just, that's all the love I really need. I love it. Excellent. I like that. Thank you so much, Wendy. I think um, we have some comments. And their time came that we can pick the winner of our tea set. Um, we have, okay, so we have a few people that commented. And let's pick a winner. We're going to pick a number. And uh, whoever made a comment, we'll see what number it was and we'll announce a winner. So I'd like to ask Wendy to do that for me. 
Just pick a number and let's open it. Number 10. No number 10? No, okay. So let's do another one. Number four. So number four is Oh, so it's the lady who asked the most questions, <laughs> Natalia Anashkina. Natalia, congratulations. You are the winner. You're going to get this wonderful set of organic teas. And um, so every morning you'll drink a cup of tea. You'll remember that you have to get yourself to the gym <laughs> or you have to go to a yoga class or Tai Chi no, class. No, she has to want to. Exactly. So <laughs> drink this tea. It's magical because it's going to make you want to exercise and, uh, you know, be very good to yourself with your diet and your lifestyle choices. Congratulations once again. And I wanted to ask you at the end of our program, unfortunately, our time is almost up. Um, ask you, Wendy, I think you prepared something here uh, to make uh, Whatever you want to say and wish to our audience would be great. First of all, with that want to go to the gym, yes, I think you have to go first to force yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I think the want to will come when you start to, after you've gone. But you can't want to before you go. Of I think course. that's a little backwards. Uh, so my wish and prayer for everybody is to experience the power of food, uh, to try a whole food, plant-based way of eating. And um, I believe that at any age we can see changes. I still see changes when I alter my food. And I believe I have to accept what is now uh, as my new normal at 80. But with some alterations, things do change. And everyone can do this. And I wish you all well. And I want you all to have a good life. That's beautiful. And a healthy life. And, and I have to say one thing, uh, really thinking about all the people in the hurricane of even Hawaii, for Florence, for coming to the Carolinas. Be safe, everyone. Be smart. Be safe. Yeah, that's very thoughtful of you. Thank you so much. And on behalf of Radio Life, I wanted to give you this wonderful oh, little orchid uh, that symbolizes longevity and health. And uh, please... Take good care of it and remember about Radio Life. Ah, thank you and so I wanted, much. I wanted just to say that aging, remember, aging is not lost use. It's not. It's, it's just a new stage of opportunities, new stage of strengths that is not granted or given to everybody. Remember that um, and feel privileged about your aging part. Stay on the wave of health, and we're looking forward to be with you again next Thursday, exactly at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Be well. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>